Uh oh, Brad. We got we got another one. Oh no. All right, we have another one. Um, utter disappointment. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Next time, get stronger toilet paper, and your finger won't go through. All right. I, I, is that what this is all about? Okay, be nice. Boop, zip it up. All right, utter disappointment. This is by David. All right. Hello, I watched your videos, got excited, and ordered uh, your product, only to be frustrated and angry. I have two Kershaw uh, CRMO flippers uh, with uh, a which I alternate as uh, EDCs. Uh, one was decently sharp, the other would easily have shaved hair. The first one is basically ruined. Oh my God, ruined his knife. Okay, I don't believe that for a second. Uh, I can literally run my thumb along the edge uh, with no danger of getting cut. I must have worked Oh, wait, okay, uh, I must have worked on the edge for 30 minutes. No edge, it says. Okay, the second previously razor sharp one. I wanted to dress up the edge. Okay, now I literally, oh, barely cut paper. Uh, might work on a cheap uh, table knife, but not on a real world blade. Okay, and I am out 60 bucks for the knife, which now will barely cut into a stick of butter. I am very <laughs> disappointed in this product and would like a full refund. Okay, so it looks like we have another piece of paper here. David says right on there, big, okay, refund. All right, uh, sir, <clears throat> this is a second email regarding the product which I wish to return. No offense, but it's basically worthless and has ruined one of my knives. Please contact me. I want my money back. Okay, so uh, right now, our uh, guy who takes care of that. So we right here have uh, one here, and this is headed out to David. And No, does this get, come back? It came back. Okay, I got to look at it. All right, it's shipped to Sharpens Best. It's from David, and uh, he's in Virginia. So David, if you're watching, what you really may have intended here is you just need to rile the things up a little bit so we'd make a video. So, uh, and I'm not trying to make fun of you, but here, here's something really obvious. <clears throat> if you have a really sharp knife and you sharpen your knife with my sharpener and it won't cut paper at all, it's extremely obvious that it's operator error and that you have no idea what the bevel or angle degree should be on the cutting edge. You probably took the knife, stood it straight up, went right straight down the blade and just ripped the cutting edge right off of the knife and then you blame the sharpener, me, my videos, my product. Okay, there's no way you can take the edge off of a knife if you listen to what I say. So let's, uh, let's, uh, you know, and, and I, I, I know why. Better yet, use the one in there. Oh, yes, 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 that's why we got it back, okay. Because that's the one that doesn't work. That's the one that doesn't work, okay. Now, this knife is obviously not sharp. So I know why Chance, the videographer, my video guy, I know why he does these videos. He thinks I'm stupid. He just wants me to sharpen his kitchen knife. Okay, I got this all figured out. All right, I've sharpened his kitchen knives for him several times trying to open packages. All right, David, what have we got here? Okay, oh my God, did he actually send back uh, he actually said he doesn't even want the business. He card. doesn't even want the card. Okay, let's hold still for a second, David. If we're going to make a video for you, and about you, and things, we're going to advertise as we always do. All right. And these are some of the cards that I put on my table. All right. So uh, let's put that over there, and uh, let's throw this down here. And uh, okay. Uh, Please refund my purchase price. Thanks. It does cool handwriting though. I gotta tell you. Yeah, it it is. It's it's kind of cool. Um, I kind of like it. Right. Let me let me just show you what I'm looking at. This it's cool. Uh, you know, if you were gonna really write something, you know, and you you wrote the whole thing that way, uh, you know, kudos to you on that. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess maybe you went to school. I don't know, or maybe that's just a. Uh, you know, uh, style that you developed. Oh boy, chance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's cool. Okay. So what do we have in here? All right, we have the sharpened spark, 
and uh, all sharpened sparks. I'm going to do my video. I'm going to do my video. Okay, all sharpened sparks, and I'm looking. It does have a little bit of a uh, little bit of the uh, coating scratched off. So let's see if that part of it works. Whoa, that's uh, that's a lot of fire. Let's do it again. So obviously that works. Obviously the sharpener is sharp enough to actually get into the metal, cut it, roll off a little bit, go fast enough, ignite it. Okay, that works. So let's screw this back together here. When the red touches the black, and this is something that I need to kind of cover too. If you get one of these in the mail and you haven't paid attention, see how this is a, a part and I'm going to screw the red onto the black. If you get one of these in the mail and you haven't been paying close attention to my videos, you may have missed this. So let me just reiterate it a little bit. When the red touches the black, when you screw it in, when it touches, hang on to the keychain a little bit. Now you don't don't get two pipe wrenches and squeeze on it, okay? But you know, give it a, a little bit of a tweak and that way it doesn't just come apart. So when you hang it on your keys, it, this, you know, rattling around out there, this doesn't fall off. I have had a few people say, uh, that they lost the sharpener part of it. They still have the fire starter um, And they actually want me to replace it. So I had some fun with one guy and I said go to Walmart Pay 40 bucks for a pair of tennis shoes go home Lose one of the tennis shoes go back to Walmart. Tell them you want another pair of tennis shoes <laughs> Let's see how that works for you. All right, so I am going to cover that again briefly here uh, The sharpener positively has let's uh, let's use a thumbnail here um, maybe get close enough because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the thumbnail coming off. Uh, it's quite obvious that it's very sharp because if you can take a thumbnail off that easy, okay, it's it's pretty sharp. So let's see. He says my sharpener doesn't work. All right. It is always operator error and I'm going to prove it right now. He says my sharpener doesn't work. So first of all, let's have some fun, David. If I put that down there on that table, how long do I have to sit here and wait before that sharpener physically does anything other than just lay there? Now that may move if the wind blows hard enough. Otherwise, probably not. So uh, let's get into operator error. Let's take a knife like this. First of all, it's a kitchen knife, it's thin. I don't suggest this on pocket knives. Uh, cheaper pocket knives that absolutely won't cut. It's too thick. You need to change the bevel. Then I might get into the V-notch, okay? Uh, forgive me for mentioning the V-notch, but there is possibilities at times when I'll use the V-notch. All right, um, so on a thin kitchen knife, not very expensive, I might draw it through the V-notch, you know, but what I do, I lay it down. I got to resituate here just a little bit. All right, I'll lay it down like this and then I'll draw the knife through there that way, okay? And the only reason I would ever do that is if we have too thick an edge, let's say it's 15 degrees on each side, uh, I get people say, oh, I sharpen my knives 20 on each side. Well, good luck with that because they're not gonna cut anything again and uh, because they're just too thick. So uh, let's use the open face and let me just look here for just a second. Right now I'm looking for scratches on the plastic to see if he even used it. He might just be you know, wanting us to make a video. Uh, I do not see any scratches on this side. That would be normal. This should be the side that would have scratches. I do see a little bit of wear here. Uh, I do see a little bit of, uh, just a tiny bit of wear right there and there. So I say he probably did use it, yes. Um, I'm not gonna call total BS uh, because I think he did use it, all right. So let, let's, uh, let's go through this, uh, maybe, you know, right straight on so we can get, all right, right now, that sharpener, okay, the tungsten carbide straight line, the open uh, face sharpener is parallel to the knife. That would not be parallel. That would not be parallel. So when I ask people to go about 10 degrees, I'm only asking for about that much, okay? 10 degrees isn't very much. You get these people, I actually get people at the shows that claim they sharpen at 40, 45 degrees. And I said, well, let's think about that for just a second. All right, if I have this and I tip it over 45 degrees, that's one side. If I have this, I tip it over 45 degrees to the other side. 45 and 45 is actually 90. So this side, we're gonna have this side. Okay, if you're straight out, straight across, all right, that's a 90 degree corner. 
Do you really think your dives are going to cut if you sharpen that at 45 degrees on each side? Absolutely not, ever. So people aren't really thinking about what they're saying when they tell me 45 degrees. Believe it or not, a whole bunch of people out there have no idea what the bevel, what the devil, uh, the uh, angle of degree is on, on the cutting edge. So you have a flat. This one actually tapers down a long ways from a sixteenth of an inch down. All right, and then it has a secondary bevel. So I'm going to put this on about 10 degrees right there and uh, hold still, zoom in, take a good look. All right, obviously 10 degrees is not 20 or 30 or 40. And I'm, I'm kind of just guessing here. I, I think I'm pretty close though. Um, so obviously, you know, 10 degrees is way down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out and then uh, I would try to get to where we can really see. If I'm on a knife like this and I'm going to slide it out the blade like that. Now, if you would please, Chance, come up here and show people from the top. I'm not at 90 degrees to the blade. And you might be wondering right now what 90 degrees means. 90 degrees to the blade would mean if I turn it clear back like this and hold it up, you see that Let's go back here. Right now, that's a 90 degree angle along the cutting edge and then straight up in the air. I'm trying to shoot for in the neighborhood of 40, 45 degrees. I'm going to tip it over and let the cutting edge of the sharpener touch the cutting edge of the knife. And I am at approximately 10 degrees. Oh, got to get this there, more in the sun. Okay. And so if I shoot for 10 degrees, I might hit 12, I might hit 8, but anywhere in there is, is fine with me because that's what I do all the time. So I'm going to come back here about, uh, if I hold it like this, my thumbnail is probably 5 eighths of an inch from the uh, carbide right here. I have a hold of it with my middle finger, my ring finger, and barely my, my little finger. I actually have the knife sharpener pinned in the palm of my hand. All right. I'm not out here like this, uh, you know, I don't put my finger up here like that. I'm not back here like this trying to work it. And if I just, if I just reach down and I pick that up and I'm, I actually closed my eyes so I can't see what I'm doing there. All right, and then it, it would be just like this, pinned in the, in the hand, little finger, ring finger, middle finger, thumb, index finger. So I have all my digits on that hand actually controlling the sharpener and there's another reason for that. So I put it on there about like this, all right, and then I turn it about like that, and then I begin to slide it along the blade. Now I can roll it back this way, out that way. I'm going to slow down so it looks like this coming back this way, all right. I'll roll it over, go out this way. When I work on the tip, I'll actually turn it like this. I'll roll it over. If I pinch it down here in my hand, I can actually roll this and control it perfectly. If it's also being supported up by the knife, then I can roll it all I want to, just like, oh, got an itch. Um, I can roll it forth and back like this. I can work on the tip, come back out this way, come back this way, that way. I can tip it up, drop this down a little bit, run it, and then I'm gonna hold still. You just kind of move around and, and look uh, under, around, from the back, on top, underneath. I'm just trying to give you every angle I can, trying to explain it the best I can. I get people who say, you go too fast, you need a better explanation. Uh, I need to be able to see better what you're doing. One guy actually said, I'm an engineer. Would you please just draw me a picture and show the angle, the degrees, things like that. And I, I probably will, I'll, I'll draw out a, I'll just trace out a knife and try to do that for you. Um, in the real near future, but if you really take a look at it, first of all, you have to understand that that's 90 degrees to the blade lengthways, okay? It's standing right straight up and down. That is not how you hold it. You run it over to about a 45 degree angle. That's it. That puts it on the sharp corner, okay? You put the sharp corner on the cutting edge at approximately a 10 degree bevel up. Let it turn a little bit this way. Let it turn a little bit that way. I disrupt the cut pattern all the time. I go down this way. I turn it over, come back this way. Turn it over, go out that way. At times, I'll go 90 degrees to the blade, just a few strokes. So disrupting the cut pattern means I tip it this way. I tip it this way. I go 90 degrees. I roll it over in my fingers. And why I say I want to disrupt the cut pattern, 
if you use a carbide tungsten carbide corner like this and you keep going one direction exactly the same time every time if I sharpen this knife just like this every time I sharpened it I would develop a uniform pattern on that blade and it would start going in the lower spots coming out on the high spots and uh, over a period of time it would take a while but over a period of time I would put what I call little railroad tracks on the blade um, now on a kitchen knife uh, I have found that that does not have anything to do with the way it cuts as, as far as making it cut less. I've actually found that they cut better. Um, and so a $10 knife that you buy at Walmart or something, if I did develop the little railroad tracks and I'm cutting fruit and vegetables and meat, uh, bread, you know, anything like that, the knife actually cuts better um, than just a straight, smooth edge, uh, especially like on tomatoes. If you have a straight, smooth edge and it's not crazy sharp, it has a tendency to slide along the skin. If you have little, tiny, microscopic serrations, the little railroad tracks that I talk about, those little, teeny, tiny points that stick up lessen the bearing surface on, on the, the blade to the tomato, and it has a tendency to get a hold of the skin and cut it. So it actually cuts better after I sharpen them for quite a while uh, with my sharpener. And uh, so just a little explanation in there. So if I, uh, now, if, I mean, I guess we go ahead and make a little longer video. I'm gonna put this knife on my knee and I'm gonna work on it just a little bit with the sharpener that was given back to me by David. And uh, b because it goes out of sight for just a second, please do not think that I changed the sharpener. I didn't, I would never do that ever. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on this knife. You've seen how it opened. Then I'm gonna go back to the same package and I'm gonna cut it open. I'll cut some paper, cut the package open. So I'm gonna put some pressure on it. I'm gonna ride it to Boston here a little bit and I'm gonna put some pressure on it. And I'm mainly using just the elbow out. I use my wrist a lot when I do this. See, I don't really have to work my elbow too much. So I'm gonna lean on this one just a little bit, cut some metal off the blade, work it just a little faster, a little harder. My hand is actually on my pant leg. And I know right now you're claiming, oh my God, he's filling his pant leg with metal shavings. Well, there may be some microscopic stuff in there, but there's nothing big enough you'd ever get it on your finger or something or in your leg. Just like that. So let's kind of hurry. I'm getting about ready to test it the first time. Right now I flip the knife every pass. I slide the sharpener down at really light. Right now I'm just polishing the blade. So why do I polish the blade? You have to get the little wire edge off of there. That little wire edge uh, hinders. Now, cutting uh, fruit and vegetables, some food and things like that, that little teeny wire edge actually helps uh, for a little while. All right, and uh, so let's see now. All right, first of all, I poked it through before. And then, oops, well, that worked pretty good. Um, so let's go through both of them. Right. Not not so hard to get through it. Let's. Uh, it's actually still fairly dull. So I'm going to lean on it kind of hard, bend the knife a little bit with the pressure I'm putting on it, and I actually want to cut that blade. If you're using a whetstone or anything else, still got to cut the blade. With a whetstone, you're just going to be there forever and ever and ever, unless you have a really aggressive or diamond impregnated whetstone uh, that that's rough, so it really cuts, and then you still got to put some pressure on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some pressure on it, cut this blade. I can see some glitter coming off on the knife and on my pant leg, so I know I'm actually cutting some metal off. Uh, I wish you guys could see it. So we just do this. So I'm going to try to stop at about, I don't know, a minute, minute maybe a minute and a half and let's see what we got now okay, that was definitely a lot easier I'm gonna do it one more time and then we'll call it quits on this one right now I'm sharpening more coming back at me I lift it up when I go towards the tip of the knife I put more pressure on it when I come back again I have it with my whole hand my little fingers got a hold of the ring middle my ring finger middle finger thumb index finger I'm up here, I'm not back here like this. I put some pressure on it. I want to be able to hold it solid. If I'm back here, it'll flex. 
I don't want to do that. All right, so again, I'm moving it towards the point of the blade, push down harder, cut coming back. Now I'm going to turn it over and cut towards the point. Do it this way, go on out. These are things, David, that you wouldn't have figured out because I don't think you owned it long enough or used it long enough to really actually figure it out. Here's what I think you actually did. Okay, first of all, if you actually dulled your knife with it, you obviously tipped it up like this. Now I'm going to hold still. Or you tipped it up even further. And then you wrote me a nasty letter. We made the video just like I think you probably thought we would. Okay. Um, so just like that, all right, I can take, if I want to, I, one of these days I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a knife like that and I'm going to make a knife out of the back of the blade and, uh, just show you that yes, I can make a knife. People say, yeah, well, if the knife is very dull, can you sharpen it? And I say, well, if I can literally make a knife out of a piece of tin, I can obviously sharpen a knife if I can take the metal off good enough to make a knife out of a piece of tin. Okay, it, it just gets better. One more time, I can't resist it. Because <laughs> I can still see just a little tiny bit of glare on the cutting edge. So I'm just gonna move along. I'm actually rolling it in my fingers. I roll it over this way, I roll it back this way, I roll it over this way, roll it back that way. Just like this, like that, go right on out, come back this way, turn it over. I've gotta stay down at my 10 degree bevel. This knife was just slightly harder to sharpen because I think it was up around probably 14, 15, 16 degrees on the cutting edge. Come back here, you. All right, now we just touch it light. I'm just polishing the little wire edge off the blade. When you cut through uh, two layers of the cardboard, the plastic, the bubble wrap, the paper that's on there. So what paper? Uh oh, there it is. Okay, you have the. Uh, uh, I can't think. Um, you've got the address and sticker on there. You have the plastic on the outside, the cardboard. You've got bubble wrap in there. So we're actually cutting through quite a bit. Okay, so poke it through. Give it a slice. <laughs> you know that. Let's see if we can go in this way. Okay. So pretty obvious. The sharpener works. There's nothing wrong with the sharpener. There's nothing wrong with any of them. Uh, you know, they just work. It's a tungsten carbide corner ground in 90 degrees, an absolute 90 degree corner. You have to know how to use it. Uh, David, if you want to, uh, we'll pay the postage. Uh, tell us that you want the sharpener back now that you've had some lessons on how to use it. Or maybe you're just stubborn, uh, you know, whatever. But it was operator error. It works perfectly. And this is Brad Buckner, SharpensBest.com. If you have any kind of a problem with the sharpeners, you know, just let me know. And uh, I'm not going to ridicule you too much or, or uh, you know, unless you write me a letter like that. Utterly, utterly destroyed my blade. Okay, no blade is ever destroyed like that unless you beat it up with a sledgehammer, grind it on a grinder. If all you did is just take the cutting edge off of it, your blade is, you see, he likes the word destroy because it makes people think, oh my God, it destroyed his blade. You know, uh, did it, uh, mis was it misused and he destroyed the cutting edge of his blade? Yes. I can do that with any sharpener. I can do that with a whetstone. I can do it with a land scale. All I got to do is just tip it up, take the cutting edge off. I can do it with a steel. A steel goes up in the air. You take your knife, you go like this. All I have to do is take the knife that I'm sharpening and tip it in far enough that when I go like this, I take the cutting edge off. I can do it with a whetstone. All I got to do is take the whetstone, it's flat, tip the knife up, work like this, I take the edge off. So. Can you take the edge off of the knife by using it incorrectly with any type of sharpener? Absolutely. Why? Human error. I would be hard pressed to take a computer apart and put it back together. Why? Because I'm ignorant in that area. You know, I, I can't take transmissions apart and put them back together right. I'll have nuts and bolts of screws left over because they, at the factory, they always put extra nuts and bolts of screws in them. Every one that I took apart had extra nuts and bolts of screws in it anyway. So, you know. Um, anyway, it works. David, if you want to sharpen your back, we'll pay the shipping back. Uh, 
and then you're going to keep it. Watch the videos. This is Brad Buckner trying to help you guys out there use the sharpeners, fix the little problems you have, explain things better, let you see uh, more close up in detail how it is, you know, things like that. Sharpensbest.com. You take care and you stay sharp out there.